Thank you. Yes, um, I would like to wrap this up real quick. I want to just touch on the Ten Commandments real quick before I close out this um segment of the lecture. I'm going to run through the Ten Commandments real quick and elaborate on them. Um, give you much detail as much as possible. You follow? The first being, you shall not have no other gods before me. The second being, you shall not make no idols. Third being, you shall not take the name of thy Lord in vain. The fourth is to um, keep the Sabbath day holy. Fifth, honor your father and your mother. Sixth being, you shall not murder. Seventh, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbors. And ten being, you shall not covet. Now, I want to go into this, the first one. Um, you shall not have no God before me. We living in the day and time. Um, we are being bombarded by numerous things distraction levels is at an all-time high you follow so these things that we are being distracted by are becoming things that some of us worship in a sort of say we put these things over the creator we put these things over ourselves we put these things over our family etc we put so much time and energy and influence on these things you follow and this first commandment ties into the second one you shall not make no idols before me and that's what we have done we have made our lower self our idol we have made our job our idol we have made sex our idol we have made celebrities and movie stars and musicians our idols you follow you even hear it in a language. When somebody adores somebody and have a level of respect, first thing that comes out their mind is that, oh, that is my idol. Well, the word idol is connected to the same word as a, a person that is idol, a person that um is not functioning from his proper stand, his um proper self. You know, idleness represents um also a form of laziness and a form of um, stupidity, so to say. You follow? You know, we got to go into the, the third commandment, which is also um, tied into this. You know, we live in a day and time where the people take the name of the Lord in vain. You know, they, they do things in the name of the Lord. They say things such as, you know, I swear to God that such such, such thing happened. I swear to God I didn't do that. You know, swearing and taking his name in vain is blasphemous. You follow? You know, um, people use the Lord to shield their dirty ways or in the um, Nation of Islam lessons said that they use the name of the Lord or they use Jesus or they use the name of their religion to shield their dirty ways. You follow? Now let's get into this this fourth one which is um, keeping the Sabbath day holy. The Sabbath is um, the so-called sixth day of the week so to say, which is um, Saturday. If you look at what happens usually on Saturdays, it became other than holy. This day is a day that people get loose and let it all out. You know, they work hard from Monday to Friday to build their stuff up. to get this paycheck and then lose their freaking mind on a Saturday. They call that what? Friday and Saturday, they call it what? The weekend, right? The weekend, the W-E-E-K-D-A-Y. But if you look at the word weekend, is that of uh, connected to the word weak when a person is not strong? The opposite of the strong end, you know? People become really weak on the days of Friday and Saturday, you know? The morals go out of the closet, you know? You have morals when you're working. Monday, but when Friday come, everything goes out of the closet. You forget that you're a person that's supposed to be worshiping and following God. You follow? So, um, people get crazy on the day of the Sabbath.
you know, that's when all the drinking, all the partying going on, the smoking of um, tobacco, the, the smoking of um, strong plants, you know, the drinking of strong liquids or strong, you know, drinks, what they call alcohol, what they call wine, what they call spirits, you follow? So, you know, we got to get it back together, you follow? Now, we're going to touch on the fifth um, commandment, which is um, honor your father and your mother. You know, the, um, the respect for elders in this day and time is gone, just about. You know, we, we come from a time where when we were younger, when we seen the elders, you know, we helped them across the street. We helped them with their bags. You know, we helped them out with bills and different things like that. When we could help out, you know, um, we respected those people that we seen as our fathers and mothers in those day and time. We acknowledged them. Even if we was doing something outside of the norm, like if we was to be doing something other than we supposed to do, we was conscious of it. We'd be looking over our shoulder to make sure that Miss or Mr. Whatchamacallit or, or such and such wasn't looking at us because we didn't want to disrespect them. We didn't want to get caught out there, you know. But the children are running the households. They are telling the parents what they do. And if you go across the head of one of these against the law type kids or these kids who have no respect for you, the first thing they do is get on that phone and call 911. You can't even hit them these days. You can't even discipline them. So, we don't have those laws and moral rules or those principles that we have at one time to keep order within our family or these, this, this, this new generation. You follow? Now I'm going to go touch on the sixth command, which is, um, you shall not murder. Now, I want to say, um, RIP to, um, Nipsey Hussle, you know, he had been, um, assassinated a couple of days ago, you know, which is a very horrific thing, you know, um, this new generation or this new wave that we live in, or these millenniums, whatever you want to call them, don't have a regards for human life. Life has been desacredized. There's no respect or no sacredness in human life like it once was. You know, people take your life at the drop of a hat over materialistic things. Or if you looking at they make wrong or just to do it just so they can get stripes, you know. People out here, they live and they, and they puff their chest up pride with having the label of being a hitter, or should I say, a killer. You follow? And you're seeing people slaughtered all over the planet in the name of greed. You know, money, land resources. When I see some of the kids in some of these countries that have to drink from dirty water with insects in it and animal urine, it breaks my heart. I cry. You follow? And, you know, and this is something that we all should be mindful of because it could be us. You follow? Now I want to touch on, um, you shall not commit adultery, you know? I know I'm using social media platform right now, but when you go on the Instagram, man, it's a monster, man. You seeing sisters displaying and putting themselves up there for sale, so to say. You know, you're seeing the assessiveness of twerking. You know, I remember there was a time where pornography was looked at something as taboo. Or if you engaged in pornography, you did it in the privacy of your own home. You follow? Nowadays, pornography, or should I say, the immoralness on social media... It's out of control. Now, with this, this gives people an invitation or give people the, the go-ahead to feel that they can approach you in a way sexually. Marriage, the union, or the agency of marriage is no longer sacred. It has been like a joke these days. I know people who've been in relationships for 10 or 15 years. And when I approached them and I asked them, Brother and sister, 
When are you getting married? When are you going to have the nikah? Hey, follow. No, I'm not getting married. And, and their excuse is this. What's going to happen? The minute we get married and put all this money into a ceremony, that's when the bad luck going to come about. And we're going to break up. So I'd rather for us to just be this way, shack up, and don't even go do the agency of marriage. So this is horrible. So adultery, sex, is being exercised or committed without the agency of marriage. You know, marriage is not looked at, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend is um, looked at as um, the, the norm now, you know. And our ancestors, they had a, a so-called process of dating. We look at the word dating, dating, dating is a plate or connect to the word data. You try to get as much information on a person as much as po possible. You follow? And then if certain qualities was met through this dating or this data collecting um, period, then the merger, or should I say what is called marriage, or nikah, is put together. And sex, after having a ceremony, was permissible. You know, and I remember a gentleman saying to me, he said that back in a certain time that when a person had sex, that they was automatically married. And then he tried to tie in the word V, I mean W, and B's, and V's was so somewhat connected. So that's why he said when you look at the word wedding, wedding is tied into the word deadin, you know? So we got to get back to hold them up, moral standards again. You follow? Now we're going to go into the Eighth Commandment is, um... You shall not steal. Let me tell you something. We being stole from every day. On all different levels. Some of us. We steal. When we on a job. We forgetting that we at that job to perform a duty. That we shouldn't be. On our cell phones. We are stealing time from our company. We are being stolen from. On numerous levels. Taxes. Our time. You know. Um, being in there with our family. Um, lives is being stolen. Uh, the control. Of our children. The list goes on when it comes down to stealing. You know. People. See stealing. As a come up. So to say. You follow. But um, I want to touch on the, the knife. Command, which is. um, You shall not bear. False witnesses against your neighbor. The respect level for neighbors is um no longer there. I remember we used to knock on the door of a neighbor to make sure that our neighbor was okay. We didn't see them within a day or two. Now, we don't even care. Our attitude is that as long as my toast, my bread is toasted and buttered, I do not care about what's going on next door or downstairs or across the hall. You follow? Because we live in a give me my, 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 a big I world now. Everything became almost desocialized. We don't have the respect of that. We so greedy. We are so selfish. And we don't have no respect for our neighbor, and your neighbor is not just a person who lives next door. Your neighbor is your fellow human being. You follow? And when you look at what the Lord said about the temple, we being the temple of the Lord, we are considered that of a building, so to say. So anytime you walk past another human being that is your neighbor, you supposed to have a respect or some type of sincerity or sensitivity towards seeing another person in distress. You follow? And the last one being, you shall not covet. That means that your heart shouldn't be set foot on things that are of no value. Your heart should be set and weighed or projected towards acknowledging the almighty creator. Of the one who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. 
you follow. And your heart should be set on the betterment of yourself. Do halal things or things that are allowed. And your heart should be set on making sure that your family and your fellow man can do better. We should all be competing in the manner of seeing who could do the best things in the sight of God. You follow? We shouldn't be debating on who could do the best twerking video or who have the best car or who kids could get you know uh, fresh the most far as um gear or clothing to, to, to um, make other kids feel less fortunate because they don't have the sneakers or the outfits of others you follow so we need to get back home when i say home we should get back to our proper person or in our proper position as being the creator's custodian here on earth. You follow? Godspeed.